All right, I think we can uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, Chris, um, first, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, who's joining our webinar today. Uh, my name is Manix. I'm Vice President of Global Sales and Strategic Partnerships at Certara. Uh, today, uh, I'm pleased to introduce Chris Mel, our Product Manager for Pharmacokinetics Software at Certara. Uh, you'll notice on the right side of the screen, there is a panel. Uh, there's a chat window there where you can actually enter any questions you have, and we will be going through the questions towards the latter half of the presentation today, but you can enter the chat questions at any time you feel fit, and we will get to them uh, shortly. So Chris, uh, thank you for joining us today, and uh, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Thanks, Mannix. So hello and welcome to today's webinar uh, about Hosted Phoenix and Integral. Uh, these are new product offerings by Sertara. Uh, my name is Christopher Mel, and I am the product manager for the pharmacokinetic software, which includes Phoenix Winnam Lin. So a bit about me, uh, my educational background is in science. I have a, a bachelor's in molecular biology and a master's in pharmacology. Uh, I've been with the company since 2003 and have conducted over 200 training courses on Phoenix Wind on Lin, IVIVC, NLME, and Trial Simulator. Uh, and uh, I recently became the Phoenix product manager, uh, which means that I get customer feedback about the Phoenix platform uh, from our customers, you know, finding out if it meets their business needs and what we can add to the software or what we can do to improve it and then work with the development team internally at Sertara uh, to continue to improve the product. So that's about me. <clears throat> um, I do want to just kind of set the table for this presentation and briefly talk about, you know, what is Phoenix? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure if you're attending this webinar, you have some familiarity, but um, just to kind of tie everything together, we'll talk about the Phoenix platform. So the Phoenix platform is the leading PKPD modeling and simulation software. It's used worldwide by uh, over 6,000 researchers at biopharmaceutical companies, academic institutions, and global regulatory agencies, including 11 divisions of the FDA. Uh, the cornerstone application within the Phoenix platform is WinNonLin. Uh, and it, uh, uh, we uh, use the Phoenix platform to combine the WinNonLin trusted algorithms with a built-in, easy-to-use graphical user interface uh, and textual editor for advanced analysis. Some of the features of the Phoenix platform include visual workflows that can be uh, used and reused, and also locked to maintain compliance. Uh, they also increase efficiency, uh, and at the end of the day, you can get reports uh, from these workflows. Um, it produces high-quality tables and figures, and it has a project-centric uh, design to easily store, uh, share, and uh, uh, collaborate with colleagues. And it also includes a fully integrated uh, validation suite for fast automated software validation. So in the Phoenix platform, just a few, a few key um, uh, points here. Uh, there's over 2,600 companies that use it worldwide. Uh, all of the top 20 global biopharma uh, use WinOnLine in some capacity. Uh, Phoenix is used in over 60 countries. Uh, we've trained over 9,000 people in using the software. Uh, we also have a very uh, strong regulatory presence, uh, including uh, over 40 um, uh, FDA approvals. Uh, it's also used at academic institutions. For example, it's uh, taught in the uh, gr uh, graduate programs. Um, in pharmacokinetics um, at several academic institutions. And there's over 33,000 peer-reviewed articles that cite Phoenix. Um, some of the regulatory agencies uh, that have accepted submissions uh, uh, from using Phoenix as part of the submission uh, include the FDA uh, here in the Western Hemisphere, uh, also Envisa, but also in Europe, uh, the uh, Medicines and Medical Devices Agency, uh, MHRA uh, in UK, as well as in the APAC region. Uh, so we make it a very top priority to make sure that we are recognized and accepted by uh, regulatory agencies all over the world. So um, I want to talk briefly about the key functionalities of the Phoenix platform. So if we look at this little diagram over here, 
Uh, Phoenix has a uh, unified uh, user interface. So it's one platform with similar menus, uh, look and feel. And then there's different modules that are all uh, using that common user interface. Uh, the primary uh, and most commonly used is WinNonLin, uh, which is used to perform individual PKPD modeling, non-compartmental analysis, uh, bioequivalent studies as examples. We also have the IVIVC toolkit, which stands for in vitro in vivo correlation, uh, and it's primarily used in formulation development. Um, another module is the nonlinear mixed effects modeling tool, which is used to perform population PKPD analyses. So maybe you did an exploratory study in Wind on Lin, and then you wanted to look at population effects like covariates um, in, in, in a population model to, to extend the analysis. Uh, we also uh, offer validation suites. Um, this is automated software validation for both WinNonLin and NLME. Uh, additionally, we have a, um, a plugin that allows uh, one to get the outputs that come from Phoenix into a CDISC format. So CDISC is a data standard, Clinical da Data Informatics uh, uh, Standards Consortium, uh, where you get standardized names <clears throat> for uh, data of a certain type. <clears throat> so concentration will have a standardized name, time will have a standardized name, uh, uh, demographic data will have standardized names, and so on. And this will easily allow one to get the outputs in a CDIS compliant uh, format. And then lastly, uh, we have a plugin to Integral. Uh, Integral is a secure central data repository, uh, so it has a database component to it. Uh, and it's used to achieve 21 CFR Part 11 compliance, complete with uh, electronic signatures and audit trail of work that is performed and then uh, saved to Integral. So all of these different modules can be accessed uh, based on the purchase of uh, a license or licenses for them uh, in this Phoenix platform. So, um, the, the topic for today is Sertara's offering to, uh, to host Phoenix in a software as a uh, service SaaS type of uh, environment. And you know, we'll first address the question, why host Phoenix? Well, uh, I should start by mentioning that Phoenix is architected and designed primarily as a desktop analysis software platform. So when Phoenix was built, uh, the idea was that a PK scientist or a pharmacometrician or someone like that would have Phoenix installed on their laptop and perform analysis uh, locally on their machine uh, and, and just save the project. Um, however, uh, we found over time, you know, through interactions with our customers, that uh, many of our customers have uh, asked for server-based deployments of Phoenix. Um, an example of that would be the Phoenix desktop application installed on a server, uh, and perhaps the end users access the server through a Citrix client. Um, but one of the challenges uh, with this type of deployment of Phoenix, um, with many users accessing that same server, there might be limitations with res respect to RAM resources, uh, uh, the pro uh, processor uh, resources, as well as temporary storage space. And that could lead to a perception that um, you know, Phoenix is slow or doesn't have a great uh, performance when it's deployed in that fashion. Um, I do want to point out that Sertara IT um, has both the technical and the domain expertise to host Phoenix. Um, you know, uh, oftentimes, you know, our, sometimes our customers will try to deploy it on Citrix themselves, or they might outsource it to a third-party IT uh, outfit to do this, um, and, and that's fine. But the third-party IT might not have uh, the knowledge of the application and how users are using it in order to optimally uh, deploy it in this type of a multi-user environment. But Sertara IT does have that expertise uh, to host Phoenix with advantages of optimization of the Phoenix application uh, performance uh, for multiple end users. Um, it's also scalable with respect to the number of users and processor cores. And we also will provide validation of the software environment provided as a service. So we do have a validation suite uh, that's um, built into the Phoenix platform uh, with the purchase of a license. Uh, customers can run this. Um, and, uh, but if, if, uh, if, if a customer purchases the, uh, the hosted version of Phoenix, uh, Sertara will perform the validation services for the customer. 
And we can also manage the change control. Uh, for example, uh, if there are updates to Amazon Web Services or Phoenix version upgrades, uh, all of that type of change control is managed by Certara. Um, this is often a challenge we've noticed with our customers. You know, they have to do a, a change control and, and uh, uh, do the paper, necessary paperwork and arrange for everything to happen. And this uh, can be perceived as a, as a burden for the customer. But with the hosted version of Phoenix, uh, Sertara will take care of all of that. Um, an additional aspect of hosted Phoenix um, is that Phoenix does have a job management system. And it's actually been part of the Phoenix platform for some time. Um, however, it hasn't necessarily been, been deployed or utilized extensively by our user uh, base. But what the job management system does is it allows for remote processing. And why is that important? Um, so <clears throat> with this option, uh, the user can remote uh, process uh, workflow objects, such as let's say that there's a large non-compartmental analysis with uh, 1,000 or 2,000 rows of data, or there's a large population model. Maybe there's a bootstrap run or a visual predictive check, uh, and it may be on the order of several minutes uh, to maybe even approaching a half hour of runtime. And the user doesn't want to just not have access to the application while that's all happening. So what you can do is you can actually send that modeling job out to a remote server and then continue to work uh, in the Phoenix application doing other things, such as creating plots or figures or tables uh, or doing another type of um, exploratory analysis, as an example, uh, while that large modeling job is running on the remote server. Um, it's also possible to remote process an entire workflow. So let's say you have a standardized workflow template uh, that's designed to uh, do several data prep uh, steps, NCA, create uh, tables and, and plots, uh, and so on. And you just want to run that uh, on its own and then continue doing something else in Phoenix. So uh, this remote processing can also be done with workflows as well as the individual objects. Um, the Sertara IT does have the technical understanding to configure and optimize the JMS. Uh, so that's another advantage uh, that's provided out of the box with hosted Phoenix. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, again, one of the, uh, the aims of hosting Phoenix, uh, in addition to, um, you know, helping customers with the IT burden of supporting the application, installing it, deploying it, and so on, is to improve the end user experience uh, with respect to performance of the application. That is, uh, how fast does it um, respond to the user uh, interacting with it, as well as uh, running models and running analyses. So I just wanna kind of show this, uh, this little um, uh, performance metrics tab table uh, that we've collected uh, recently here. So the first column here, we described the compute environment, which includes the operating system, uh, CPU, RAM, uh, and what we did is in each of these different environments, we ran the validation suite. Um, so the validation suite is a series of tests. Uh, in the case um, of Win on Lin, uh, there are 86 tests that run through. Uh, and uh, it, essentially, that's kind of our benchmark because it's the same operation. It's the same series of steps so that we can compare the different environments with, with a standardized um, series of, of, of processes. And uh, so we start in column two with a typical laptop installation, which is kind of what Phoenix was designed to be. Uh, so this environment is a uh, Microsoft Windows 10 enterprise system with an Intel CPU of uh, 2.11 gigahertz. Uh, it does have eight processor cores uh, and, it, um, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, and in that environment, the, uh, the win on win validation suite ran to completion in about four minutes. Uh, and the NLME validation suite ran in about 50 minutes. Uh, next, what we did was we attempted to uh, create an environment that we thought would be typical of a customer Citrix deployment. Uh, so this environment has a Microsoft Windows Server 2016 standard edition with an Intel 2.5 gigahertz processor that had two cores. Uh, the RAM allocation was between 1.8 to 8 gigabytes per user. 
And in that environment, the one on one validation suite uh, ran in about double the time, eight minutes, 42 seconds. And again, nearly double for the validation suite, it was uh, 90 minutes. Uh, so slower performance in that type of a rollout. And then <clears throat> with the hosted, we were attempting to match um, you know, uh, a, a similar environment as a Citrix deployment, again, using the 2016 data center with an Intel 2.5 gigahertz processor with two cores, uh, RAM allocation of eight gigabytes. And again, the win on -win validation suite runtime was about four minutes and the NLME Val suite runtime was a little over 30 minutes. So the, the performance with Phoenix hosted in AWS was more comparable to the typical laptop installation and a better performance than on a comparable Citrix server. Okay, um, so this validation suite that we did uh, in the benchmark testing, I wanna just briefly talk about that. So what is the validation suite? Um, so <clears throat> as required by FDA 21 CFR part 11 uh, and several international uh, standards as well, uh, it is necessary uh, that analyses uh, uh, in software that are used in regulatory submissions uh, must be performed in a validated environment. And companies often investigate, uh, invest significant uh, time and resources uh, to perform these validation uh, steps. So if we take kind of a classic uh, typical validation effort by manual test cases performed by an end user, uh, maybe manual cross-checking uh, with a third-party application, that could take weeks or even months uh, to complete throughout the entire uh, software package. Uh, the win on win and NLME validation suites are integrated in the Phoenix platform, and it's possible to uh, complete this validation in, on the order of minutes. Uh, and the output of that validation is a non-editable PDF report. Uh, so essentially what happens is that uh, the validation suite takes a data set for a test case, uh, runs it through a series of steps in the software designed to produce an output. It could be a non-compartmental analysis or a PK compartment model or a bioequivalence tool. But regardless, it goes through a series of steps to set up and run uh, that uh, analysis via script. And that same set of steps was performed uh, on a machine at Certara to produce a reference file output from that same analysis. <clears throat> so when the test is run in the validation suite, uh, uh, that uh, the output on the local system where the user runs the validation suite is compared to the reference file to ensure that the outputs are the same on the end user machine as they were on the reference machine. Um, so the validation though, uh, it's, it's performed in, in uh, easy steps. There's a little menu at the top of the Phoenix application where the user can select validation, start validation. Uh, select the product or products that they want to validate, and then just click Start Validation. At that point, it will automatically uh, just start running through uh, the battery of test cases. And then when all of the test cases are run, there is an automatic generation of the validation report uh, that can be then be reviewed and sign off on if successful. Uh, if not successful, investigate why. Maybe there was some sort of installation problem or something that made it not run correctly. Uh, but that report is available and can be, uh, when it's run successfully, saved, uh, signed off on and, and saved as evidence of validation. Um, <clears throat> an example of the validation report, uh, you can look at uh, uh, test, uh, test case by test case, the status pass or fail. Uh, in this case, all of them passed. Uh, selected results worksheets are displayed here. And then uh, the user can look at the reference file, the run file, and there's also a difference file that can be pulled up. Uh, again, these are stored in, in a CSV format uh, and are easily accessible post-validation. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead <clears throat> and uh, run the validation suite. Okay, so I'm going to actually move to the hosted environment. So let's say that I'm performing a validation. So this is uh, Phoenix in the hosted environment. <clears throat> and I've got the Phoenix application open here. Uh, and let's say that I want to do a win on win validation. So I would go to validation and then start validation. <clears throat> and let's, for example, do a win on win. So I'll check the win on win checkbox and then press start validation. 
uh, to initiate the run. Okay, so the status window comes up. <clears throat> it begins with some installation qualification uh, 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 steps. So it's gonna check all the uh, Phoenix uh, files that are installed here, as well as verify that the uh, comparison engine is, is working okay in the local installation. And now it's running through tests. You can see it loading projects and running analyses. And as the tests are, are, are run to completion, you get an indicator that says passed, which is a green checkbox, uh, failed, which is a red X, or uh, not run or skipped, which is this uh, yellow NA. Uh, so that's running. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that run in the background. Again, this is in the hosted instance of Phoenix. Um, I do have Phoenix on my local machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. So this is actually on my laptop. Uh, <clears throat> because I want to just briefly, in the interest of time, show what an example uh, validation report looks like. So if I go to validation reports, uh, let me go ahead and pick an example here. Okay, so in this case, we have the uh, win online validation report. Uh, and so this was run uh, in a previous date. Uh, it was run on August 12th, and uh, in this validation report, it begins with a signature page. Uh, this is where you can identify who ran the validation, the name of your company or institution, a signature block and date to sign off on it. Uh, and then there is a summary page that describes the environment uh, where Phoenix is installed and running, it includes the version of Phoenix, um, the number of test cases, pass fail, uh, the total runtime. Uh, as well as also information on the system, such as the OS uh, and hardware information, such as the CPU, uh, where the temp directory uh, is uh, located and, and so on. Uh, and then we get to the test execution status where tests are grouped uh, according to what functionality they're testing. So the framework, which is common to the entire Phoenix application, uh, those tests are performed. And then the win on lin specific uh, test cases uh, uh, that test various things such as the data tools, data wizard, um, PKPD compartment models as an example. Uh, let me go ahead and scroll down here as well. We have bioequivalence, and then there's a whole battery of non-compartmental analysis test cases that are also performed with different routes of administration, extravascular, IV bolus, IV infusion as an example, uh, single dose, multiple dose, uh, whether or not to include partial AUCs uh, in the run, uh, different trapezoidal methods for computing area under the curve, linear versus log, um, and so on. So it's a very comprehensive series of tests of all of the different features of the non-compartmental analysis and the other uh, analysis tools that are built into the Phoenix uh, package. And then uh, if I go down here a bit, uh, let me uh, jump down a few pages here. And then uh, this is where you can actually access uh, the, um, uh, you know, the different uh, outputs and, and, and runs. So let's say that there was a, uh, uh, an NCA that did partial AUCs. Um, you can access the reference file or the run file. I'll go ahead and pull up the run file. And it's generated in a CSV format. Uh, so this is the final parameters from that specific test case. Uh, and so you can see all the numbers and the, and the PK parameters uh, that were computed there. Uh, and then maybe you want to look at the difference file that compares the reference file to the, the run file. Uh, and in that case, uh, this is the difference file. So it compares line by line the numeric values uh, that were produced on the test machine compared to the reference machine. And so here there were zero differences uh, detected. So the uh, the validation passed for that test case. Okay, so that's an example of the validation suite. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this report. So again, this is a product offering that we have that customers can use, but uh, in practice with hosted Phoenix, uh, Sertara does perform this validation. But the point in me showing you all of this is so that you understand it's not a black box, you know, you understand what this validation effort is. Uh, so I've returned uh, to the hosted environment. 
the validation suite is still running, but we can see here by the you know the progress bar here that it's well over you know halfway done. Uh, I'm not going to run it all the way through uh, to completion in the interest of time here, but this was just to kind of show you you know what it is, what it does, and what does it look like when it's in operation. Okay, so that's the uh, the validation suite. I'm going to go ahead and return to my uh, slides here briefly <clears throat> and introduce uh, Integral. So what is Integral? Um, Sitara Integral is a data repository uh, where one can easily bring together uh, uh, data, uh, but also analyses that are run uh, in Phoenix. But you can also use this repository to save data that's run in other applications, such as uh, SAS or R. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the analysis platform is, as long as you can uh, get it uh, into Phoenix and uh, uh, save it to Integral, uh, you've got it all in one repository. And so it allows the users to connect, capture, visualize, and analyze data while ensuring compliance guidelines are met. Okay, so here's an example uh, workflow of using Phoenix uh, hosted. That's this little cloud icon with the Phoenix logo on it to connect to Integral. It's on a uh, Amazon Web Services AWS private cloud. Uh, and you could also, uh, it, so the, what the customer might do is use a variety of client applications, uh, including Phoenix uh, and uh, other applications, it could be non-MEM, could be SAS, could be R, uh, and save this uh, to Integral. Uh, it's also possible uh, if you're doing any type of outsourcing, for example, to a CRO, uh, maybe the CRO or partner uh, does some analysis and sends it back to you in the form of a Phoenix project. Uh, project. Uh, you can get that into Integral, or the partner could have a license to save directly to Integral with limited access to only the studies uh, that they're working on and not see the other studies uh, that, that the, uh, the, the originating company uh, is, is working on. Okay. Um, as far as security and uh, login is concerned, uh, Integral does use Okta. So Integral is a cloud-based application hosted by Certera and AWS. Um, there is an Okta login for all users, and there's two primary ways to access Integral. One is via a plugin in Phoenix, and the other is uh, through a web browser. Uh, so this is an example of the sign-in page uh, for the Integral browser. Uh, so the user has a username and a password that's authenticated by Okta to let them in uh, and access the system. Um, this is kind of a snapshot of what uh, Integral looks like. So on the left-hand side, we have a series of studies. Those are these blue root folders uh, um, you know, shown here. And within that, there are subfolders such as data and analyses and reporting. Uh, in this case, in the data folder, uh, maybe there was an R script. That, that's stored in there uh, that the user wanted to run. So this is the, uh, when clicking on it to select it, the main viewing window shows the contents of that R script. And then maybe there's some outputs such as XPT files or text files uh, from that R script running, uh, you know, and, and companion files and so on. So this is just a little bit um, to show you what, what Integral looks like. There is also the concept of level of access to Integral. So uh, when a user logs in, they are assigned a certain security status, uh, and that um, has to do, it governs their access to root folders, which is, were those blue folders on the previous slide, um, data, and then library files. Uh, library files are files that might be common across analyses. So maybe there's a, a company standard workflow uh, template for a typical preclinical study. Uh, that's designed to be used in most cases. That workflow template might be stored in the library, and then any user, regardless of what uh, study uh, they're trying to run, could go to the library and pull out that workflow template uh, and run it with their data set for their study. Uh, but the main levels of access are um, read, um, edit, uh, delete, lock, and so on. Uh, and there's also an admin role as well. Uh, that allows the admin to manage other users. So there's a full uh, security model uh, that can be customized to meet the needs of any customer. Um, when the user is working, 
in Phoenix and then uh, uh, maybe either edits data or creates an al new analyses and wants to save it back. Uh, anytime information is stored to Integral, um, the user is prompted with an electronic signature prompt uh, where they enter their username and password, as well as a reason for saving or making any changes uh, to the data. Uh, and this is tied to the compliance aspect of Integral because this electronic signature and the reason will be stored in the audit trail uh, for that study and can be viewed at any later date uh, just to, to track. Uh, the flow and what's happened with all the data. Uh, so this is an example. Uh, here we have uh, uh, some audits and audit reasons. What was the uh, event? Um, maybe he uploaded data for demo and then ran an, an, a, uh, an analysis. That's the second entry. Uh, so that those are those are examples there. Um, so kind of to, to recap uh, the data repository capabilities. Um, First, number one is compliance. It ensures um, 21 CFR Part 11 compliance criteria for regulatory submissions. Um, it is a secure and third-party verified, pre-validated, cloud-based, uh, software-as-a-service hosted technology. Um, it provides version control, traceability, and auditability of data. And it also introduces operational efficiencies uh, because there's one data and model repository uh, it's accessible through the Phoenix platform, uh, but really it's technology agnostic. It doesn't care if it's a, a .r file or a .xpt file or a non-mem control file. Um, it's able to store any type of file format uh, in that repository. Um, <clears throat> Integral does uh, enable quick search and visualization of data, and it adheres to uh, the CDISC data standards in a searchable context. Um, it allows sharing and reporting of internal data with CROs and partners, and uh, the implementation guidance is included to maximize, uh, maximize efficiencies as well as best practices. <clears throat> so this is um, just kind of a, a brief checklist to compare, uh, you know, what some companies might do to try to achieve compliance and do auditing and tracking. Uh, so, uh, you know, you know we, we, we list here uh, things such as uh, file versioning, uh, dependency tracking, role-based privileges, blinding, whether or not it's validated, uh, software as a service, configurable uh, folder structure, search capabilities, large file support, and so on. And, you know, some partial solutions that, that some companies might, might do are, might be to use SharePoint or GitHub to do some of this. But in this comprehensive list of, of a functionality that's related to 21 CFR Part 11 compliance, really the only complete solution uh, is Sertara Integral. Uh, its predecessor that you may have heard of, such as PCAS and PCAS Online, uh, had more capabilities than SharePoint or GitHub but also in, in an extent needed to be combined with uh, 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 best practices and so on. And Certera Integral has expanded even beyond uh, PKS. So the, uh, specifically the CDISC is a, uh, a, a critical component that was added uh, with Integral. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to return to the cloud computing environment uh, to show uh, what it looks like to interoperate between Phoenix and Integral. So I'll come back to my cloud uh, installation. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, sign in to, uh, to Integral. So there's a, uh, a menu at the top of Phoenix. I should probably mention that, uh, that Integral is, is configured uh, in the Edit Preferences menu. You just basically uh, add the, uh, the URL. Uh, where uh, the uh, integral portal is located. Uh, and then you use the integral plugin uh, to connect via a browser. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and connect to this browser. And it's got my username in here. I did check the remember me, so uh, hopefully it remembers me. And then I can go ahead and let's see. Okay, so I'm now logged in. Um, and then in this browser window, I can see, you know, all of the uh, different studies that are in this integral instance. 
uh, and then I can pick and choose uh, one uh, from the list that I might want to uh, to work on. So I might uh, go down into the subfolders where we have analyses, data, and uh, sub documents. I might pick a uh, non-compartmental analysis uh, Phoenix project. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and load that save point. <clears throat> So it's now going to bring that project from Integral into my Phoenix application. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, close this uh, browser. And then uh, I do want to just briefly talk about uh, what's in this project. So this project has a workflow in it. Uh, and this workflow uh, consists of a exploratory plot. Uh, so this exploratory plot um, is a uh, this is a linear plot of the uh, individual concentrations versus time for multiple subjects for two different treatments integral and integral plus rifampin uh, so they're just compared side by side there and then maybe a uh, user did a non-compartmental analysis on the plasma data uh, that includes the terminal phase calculation that's common to nca uh, as well as the final parameters uh, and final parameters pivoted that are output that include things like the Cmaxes and the AUCs. And then from there, uh, the user uh, maybe, a, maybe made a table of final parameters. Uh, so that's actually viewed here. Uh, so this table uh, summarizes key parameters uh, for all the different subjects, as well as summary statistics for those parameters. So there are things like uh, Cmax, Tmax, Tlast, AUC infinity, AUC percent extrapolated, clearance, and volume. Uh, and that's for both uh, treatments, both with and without the antibiotic. Uh, and then maybe the user did a, um, a box plot to compare uh, Cmaxes and maybe an XY categorical plot. Uh, and so uh, <clears throat> what, uh, what you might do in, in this case is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, delete this for now. Um, but let's say that the user um, uh, had some new data came in and wanted to uh, re rerun it here. So I'm just going to basically mimic this workflow uh, being out of date. Uh, I'm just going to unmap from this data link object uh, one of the variables, in this case study, and then just map it back. And what it did is it turned everything red in the workflow uh, to indicate that these are now out of date because something changed upstream. So you're going to need to run all of them again uh, to get the latest uh, data. Um, so what I can do is uh, uh, what I alluded to in an earlier slide was that job management system where maybe I want to remote process. Uh, so uh, if this little icon here is called remote execute and it's all pre-configured pre and pre-installed as hosted Phoenix. And so what I can do is I can send this entire workflow off as a job to a remote server, and uh, I can, I'll go ahead and click submit. And so now it's going off and uh, being uh, run remotely on the server. And while it's executing, uh, what I might wanna do is make another plot. So let's say that I wanna continue working in Phoenix while all this is running remotely. Uh, maybe I want to uh, send this to uh, plotting and do an XY plot and say, oh gosh, I forgot to include log plots. So uh, maybe in this case, what I'll do is um, create a plot and let's see, I want to uh, group by uh, subject, compare the treatment descriptions, use relative actual time and then plot concentration. Um, and in this case, I want the Y axis to be logarithmic. So I'm working with uh, this. And in this case, I'll execute this plot locally okay so that's this this other icon here so i've now made my my extra plot uh maybe i want to do something like fit image to screen uh just to, to fill it out so i can look at the individual points a little bit more closely and then in the meantime uh this has been executing remotely so what i want to do is um you know view the the um the job status um so uh i'm going to select um the uh, I'll go ahead and view the jobs. Okay, so I can see here, this is my uh, workflow and it's been submitted and it says results in queue. 
which means that, you know, uh, the queue means that multiple jobs could be running at the same time. In this case, I only had one, but, uh, but it tells me that essentially the remote job is done. So I'll go ahead and select action and then select merge and click merge. And then I say, I do want to save the changes to the project and I'll click yes. <clears throat> and so what that's going to do is that's going to bring the latest run of that entire workflow and I'll have that um, plus the new plot that I created. So this is my new plot uh, that had the uh, the log plots. So I'll call this uh, log conk plots by treatment. Okay, and then my workflow is not up to date because it finished running on the remote server. Um, <clears throat> from here, what I would do is go ahead and save this back to integral. So I'm going to select the integral uh, menu at the top and then select save. And the reason I'm clicking save is I want to keep this dependency tree. So I want this latest save to be a new version of an existing analysis. Um, and then there are certain settings you can do. This is called a save point. Uh, it's got a description. I don't really need to change any of this. Uh, there are save options such as uh, saving uh, uh, outputs in different file formats, whether you want Excel or CSV or uh, XPT. Or, or rich text and so on. Uh, so there are some save options you could look at at this point, as well as looking at the uh, dependencies uh, and so on. Uh, but in this case, I'm gonna leave everything set to the default, uh, click my next arrow, uh, and then click finish uh, to complete the save. And at this point, I am uh, prompted to put in an electronic signature. Uh, so I'm going to uh, give a reason here, and that is rerun workflow and add log plots. So that's my reason for saving this back. Uh, here's my username. And I'll click next and then put in my password. And click sign. So now it's saving the project back uh, to integral. Okay, and so that step's done. And then I wanted to uh, look at the, uh, let's go ahead and look at the, uh, the browser. So I'm gonna go to the, uh, the browser here and go to the uh, integral URL. So now I'm using a, a, a web browser. In this case, it's uh, Google Chrome. If I can... Okay. And of course, uh, you know, um, the customer can control the complexity requirements and how often you change the password and, and those sorts of things. Um, so now I want to go down and look at that study that I was just working on. And so that was this, uh, let's see, this was uh, 8A. Okay. And it was this NCA project. Um, so in the properties here, uh, I can see the version uh, that it was run. Uh, and then I can also look at the history here. And so uh, this uh, might have been created uh, by a different user. Uh, in this case, uh, Simon Davis uh, created the, the project and worked through three revisions of it on different dates. Uh, and here, uh, I worked on it here today on September 27th. Uh, and you can see that it was updated uh, with my uh, reason uh, for updating. Uh, and you can also do things like generate the audit report here. Um, so in this case, uh, I want a summary, maybe include file differences, uh, most recent versus prior, uh, and then click generate report. So it's really easy to track, you know, even if you wanna look at specific versions, 
uh, of, of what happened um, and, and, and see what happened with those. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's real easy to, to, to view that. And here's the, uh, the, the summary report. Um, so it shows you the location, uh, the project name, uh, and who saved it, the most recent event. Here it is, September 27th, it's revision five. Um, and basically extensive tracking of what happened uh, at each stage of the analysis, uh, metadata of the study, um, you know, such as whether it's blinded or not, whether it's locked or not, um, other descriptive information. Um, but it's designed to be a very user-friendly uh, tracking system uh, for uh, work that's used in regulatory submissions. Okay, so that, um, that completes uh, my example uh, workflow that I wanted to show to you today. Uh, at this point, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, segue back to my slides and then just talk about the different product offerings uh, that are available. Uh, so these new offerings, uh, the first one is uh, Wind Island Secure. Uh, and in this case, it's uh, uh, Phoenix installed on the end user's desktop or laptop with a plugin for data storage in the cloud. Uh, so the plugin is, is the integral plugin that I just showed you. Uh, so it has one Wind Island license, one integral admin, uh, one integral full user, which includes write access for saving results uh, and a validation suite license. So that's a bundle, when on, when secure. The second is Phoenix hosted. Uh, this is Phoenix in, uh, hosted uh, by Sotara on an AWS server, server uh, with data stored in the cloud. Uh, and uh, provided with this is a one when on, when license, uh, Amazon Workspaces, AWS server managed, maintained and validated by Sotara. Um, I did want to point out that one uh, another advantage with the software as a service offering is that it doesn't matter what the operating system is on the end user's machine. Uh, they could be either Windows user or they could be a Mac user. The key point is that they just need Amazon uh, Workspace uh, uh, software. Uh, that's basically this little um, uh, plugin that I've been using uh, to, uh, to access the cloud. And then our, our, our third uh, product offering is the Phoenix Hosted Compliant. Uh, this is Phoenix installed on a AWS server with data stored in the integral cloud. Um, and then you access it with Amazon Workspace installed on the end user's desktop. So as long as the end user can run Amazon Workspace uh, application, whether it be Windows or Mac, they can access this, this hosted instance. Uh, and included with this package is one Win Nonlin license, uh, one integral admin, uh, one integral full user, the Amazon Workspaces software, uh, AWS server managed, maintained, and validated by Sertara. Okay, so those are the, uh, the product offerings. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to um, open up the floor and see if we have any questions. Yes, um, Chris, thank you. Uh, we do have a few questions here. And for those who would like to ask additional questions, you can use the chat box to the right on your GoToMeeting. Um, dashboard. Uh, the first question is, how often is Phoenix updated? Yes, thank you, Mannix. So um, our, our track record is that we update the Phoenix application approximately once per year. Um, so uh, that, that'll typically be in the form of a version upgrade. Uh, and traditionally, we've allowed customers to decide when they want to upgrade. Um, older versions eventually fall off of support. It's typically 18 months after the, the, um, the prior version is supported for another 18 months after a new version comes out. But we do uh, stick to a cadence of approximately once per year updating Phoenix. Okay. And another question is where geographically is Phoenix hosted? Like where are the servers geographically? Yes, uh, so currently uh, Phoenix Hosted is in the uh, US Eastern uh, region. Uh, we have plans to expand Phoenix Hosted to have a uh, data center in Frankfurt, uh, Germany, as well as in uh, Japan. Okay, um, another question around updates is, will I be notified prior to the update? Or will, will I be notified? I think they're asking if Phoenix will be, they'll be notified when, when it's being updated or before it's updated. 
Yes, so so anyone with a Phoenix license uh, gets a notification email uh, uh, saying that there will be a version upgrade. Uh, that includes any downtime. The, the downtime should be minimal, and typically we try to schedule this over weekends, but we, we do send out uh, updates uh, whenever there's a, a, a software version upgrade coming up. Okay. Another question here is, is this available for academic use? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, it, it is possible uh, to uh, do academic use. Uh, you'll need to talk to your account manager uh, if you have interest in the uh, the academic pack package. Um, and some there are some organizations around the world who we call our centers of excellence, where they actually teach the Phoenix application in their uh, graduate curricula. And in exchange for that, uh, we partner with them as a center of excellence and maybe collaborate. For example, we collaborated with um, uh, University of Minnesota to make an R package for, for Phoenix. Uh, so uh, we, we certainly allow uh, those types of licenses, but for the specifics, just talk to your account manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, reach out to your account manager and they can provide uh, details and pricing and so forth. Um, Next question is, I think you already touched on this one. What types of machines uh, can access hosted Phoenix? Yeah, yeah. So, so essentially, it's uh, uh, any type, uh, any machine that um, has uh, Amazon workspaces on it. So, uh, I'm just going to try and show this real quick. This is my native desktop, and it's just this little icon here, Amazon workspaces. Uh, that I run on my machine. And as long as I have this installed and running, I just launch it. Uh, and then uh, I connect to the context uh, that I need, which in this case is this integral uh, staging environment. And then uh, I have access to the, uh, the, the, the the cloud application. So essentially you can download this, I think, yeah, you can download Amazon Workspaces directly from Amazon and then you log in with like your username and password, right? To gain access to the, to the hosted environment. Is that right? Exactly, yes. Okay. All right. Um, good question here. Does Sertara offer a free trial so I can test Phoenix hosted? Uh, yes, uh, you can arrange a, a free trial with your account manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just reach out to your account manager and we can arrange for a, a, a trial for you to test out. Um, let's see here. How can I purchase Phoenix Hosted? So again, that would be just talk to your Sertara account manager. If you don't know who your account manager is, uh, feel free to email sales at sertara.com and that'll probably get routed to your account manager to reach out to you. Um, another question here is, can the data of a Citrix environment be migrated to the cloud environment? If yes, what kind of effort would this represent? Yeah, so I, I think this uh, this question kind of addresses maybe there's a customer who has an existing Citrix server and they've got a whole bunch that they've stored in it, maybe on a SharePoint or what have you. Uh, and in this case, um, you know, the way to best get it into the cloud application is through Integral. Uh, so what you could do is upload the data from the Citrix server to Integral in batches using the Integral client app. Um, and that's something, you know, uh, if you wanted to talk to our technology services for advice on how to do that, we could certainly set that up, um, depending on the volume and complexity of the folder structure. But uh, it, essentially, long story short, it, it needs to happen uh, through the integral client, and then the data can be ported over from Citrix over to the, uh, the integral application. Okay. And um, then another follow-up regarding validation. Do you validate for companies in the UK? Yes, absolutely. Um, Sertara follows uh, FDA, uh, OECD, and uh, uh, GAMP computer system validation guidelines. Okay. All right. Um, is there a limit to the number? Is there a limitation in terms of the number of users that can work in Phoenix at the same time? No, that 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 um, that gets arranged up front. So you know, when you talk to your account manager, you know, here's what I want to do. Here's how many users I, I want. You know, there's no limitation of the number of users. Uh, you just need to purchase the associated number of licenses to support that number of users. And uh, and then within the cloud environment, each Phoenix user uh, has a dedicated virtual machine that's not shared with anyone else. Oh, okay. So each person gets like their own 
box essentially, right? Their, their, their own workspace, yeah. yeah. Nice, okay. Um, will older versions be available in the cloud hosted solution? Regulatory inquiries will need to have access to the version the model was evaluated on, maybe three to four years later. Right, so uh, over time, Phoenix does uh, go through version upgrades. Uh, the current version is 8.3.5. Uh, and but there are older versions out there, uh, 8.2.x, 8.1.x, uh, even earlier than that. Uh, all of those files that were saved from those earlier versions, let's say you had a, a project saved from Phoenix 6.4 or from Phoenix 7, uh, you can save that for posterity uh, if it ever needs to be loaded up. That old project version will always be able to load into a newer version of Phoenix. Um, but as far as the hosted Phoenix environment is concerned, uh, we always keep the hosted environment on the latest version. Uh, that's to make sure that you have the best version of the software with the, the most features and uh, uh, the best quality, uh, you know, because over time we continue to improve the product. But even that being said, that uh, in the hosted Phoenix, you'd have the latest version. If you needed to go back and retrieve one of those older projects from several versions prior, you could load that project uh, into the, the hosted Phoenix. It's interesting. Does does, uh, does hosted Phoenix provide Office 365? I guess for people who want to use Excel, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so, so essentially, this hosted Phoenix is maintained uh, by Certara. Um, that you know, it, it is hosted. We provision it with uh, Office 365, the Office 365 suite. Uh, what we don't do is we don't allow the end users to install additional software. So essentially, what you, you know, you've got Phoenix and you've got Office 365 uh, primarily for Word and Excel, maybe for PowerPoint uh, and so on. Um, but um, and, and, and that that comes with the package. Okay. And speaking of PowerPoint, this one is asking, uh, when will the PowerPoint, I guess your presentation, be released, and who is the contact point for details? Yeah. So uh, so I will go ahead and make the uh, slides that I presented today. Uh, and you can contact your account manager to get them. Yeah, just reach out to us and then we'll uh, email over Chris's slides for you if you want uh, to just take them and share them with others in your organization. Um, this question is around protection. How does Phoenix AWS protect data? Right, so um, the data security is handled by Sertara Integral. Uh, and Integral is fully compliant with modern cloud data security best practices. Okay. I think that's it. Um, oh, what what do the IT department that support WinOnLine in the company need to know in order to implement the cloud AWS solution for the user community instead of Citrix publication or local installation? Yeah. So so from the IT point of view. It really removes a lot of the overhead for the IT department, uh, and it's really quite minimal. The user just needs to be able to connect, uh, connect to the URL for the hosted instance uh, from their desktop through uh, Amazon Workspaces. Um, so the support from internal IT um, with regards to installation and rollout would be minimal. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Um, if anyone has additional questions um, after this presentation, you can email them directly to sales at sertara.com, and then we can get you in touch with Chris or whomever in the organization can best address your question. Uh, once again, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Chris, for presenting. And I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, Matt.